Ladies and gentlemen of the Shrek Game and Setacom video, let's discuss Satya Nadella's master plan for Microsoft and just where the Xbox and gaming as a whole is going to be falling into this grandmaster strategy. So it's fair to say that many have wondered exactly what Microsoft are planning with the Xbox One. As many of you are aware, Windows 10 is going to be added to the Xbox One. It's going to be a Windows 10 at the very core. And Nadella is stating that this vision is Microsoft's gaming business. It's their, it's their golden egg, I guess you could say, or the, the goose that's laid the golden egg. Microsoft's business strategies have certainly evolved over the past several years. And in fact, if you were to take a look at the company of, let's say, 2015 in terms of their strategies, and then you were to compare it to, let's say, 2008 or 9, like many businesses nowadays, you probably would almost think it was an entirely different company, and I guess you could say it is. When Satya Nadella first took the job back in early 2014, he announced that it will be a mobile-first, cloud-first company, and in fact, I guess since then, the, the actual systems themselves, or the um, the pieces of hardware almost that, that you're running, are now becoming almost secondary. Microsoft are becoming a much more application-based and a service-based company. So in short, systems like the Xbox or your PC or what have you are almost tools for them to allow you to deliver those services into the living room. So Business Insider have actually been discussing this and according to them and Satya himself, they want to place the user first. So for example, Office will run on an Android tablet, Skype will run on a Macintosh. In other words, the key applications, the key programs, the key games are going to run on a wider variety of devices. However, as many of you are aware, unification is probably the real, the real, I guess you could say the, uh, the heart of the matter. So the Xbox One and the PC have been almost two different p platforms. There have been games, of course, which have operated across both. For example, you might have Fable, which is released on the original Xbox and also released on the PC and so on. And that's cool, you know, that, that's fine. But in November, they are stating that things are going to change quite considerably. It's effectively going to be an almost day and night difference because the Xbox One with the new Windows 10 operating system, it's almost going to be a, I guess you could say a slightly tailor-made version of Windows 10, which is the same version that runs across PCs, tablets, mobile phones, smartphones. And we've heard about these plans for some time. In fact, the Xbox Group Product Manager told Business Insider it's hard, really hard. It's not really hard to think about that vision with games, and he is the Xbox Group Product Manager once again. He then went on to say that um, this means that we now have one operating system on all Microsoft devices. So the update itself will do a lot of stuff. For example, there'll be a brand new menu for the Xbox One, so you won't have to uh, rely so much on the Kinect sensor. Backwards compatibility with a lot of the Xbox 360 games, which I must admit, I was very impressed that Microsoft managed to do that. I do applaud them. It was a very, very, very cool piece of uh, news when they announced it, and I have to say it showed a lot of uh, kudos in terms of programming. It was, it's not, it's not easy to get that done. And in fact, um, senior group product management for Xbox Live, Mike Lavin, said uh, when he was referring to Nadella himself, he's fully on board with gaming. So I guess while Windows 10 itself was going to be the heart, the glue, at least according to Lavin, is going to be Xbox Live. It's going to be the, quote, center of your gaming life across both PC and video games console, just as it's pushing Office 365 as the center of your working life. So in short, Gaming equals Xbox Live, and this is something that Microsoft has been really pushing. In fact, in another slight, in another discussion, they've said they're no longer actually focused necessarily on the number of consoles in your living room. Um, instead of sales of the Xbox One, they are now focused on Xbox Live accounts because they want people in that ecosystem. They, that's what they're focused on. It's kind of a scapegoaty way of getting around the. Uh, 
the sales figures of the Xbox One. Not that, once again, they're atrocious, but obviously they're still not quite what they'd hoped for in terms of catching up with the PlayStation 4. With all of that said, there are a few errors with what's said uh, in this article. For example, they say, and I quote, Plus, the Windows 10 update to Xbox One is going to make it easier for games to enable multiplayer gaming between PC and console, which has been a technical challenge on all major platforms. Microsoft published titles like Giant and Fable Legends for the Windows 10 and Xbox One will be the first to fully support it. Honestly, it's not really been a massive technical challenge, to be totally honest with you. There have been a lot of games in the past that have done this. For example, Shadowrun on the Xbox 360, that's one of them. Street Fighter 4, uh, sorry, Street Fighter 5, that has crossplay. Uh, that would be between the PlayStation 4 and the um, uh, PC, of course. And there are even cases where the PlayStation 2 um, had games where they were compatible with the PC. Other points which are cited, which are rather interesting, and some of you may know this anyway. For example, the Windows Store, Microsoft Apps, and Microsoft App Store, they will be combined so that uh, at the future point with the Xbox existing digital game store. So in a sense, it allows developers to create a game and simply sell it across multiple different devices rather than needing to publish or publish across multiple different systems. It makes it easier for the developers themselves. Cortana, that's also going to be coming, of course, to the Xbox One. Cortana has been around on Windows 10 for some time, and it makes sense, I guess, for them to, especially with uh, Connect functionality, for them to, of course, place it over to the uh, X1. I guess, for many, it's going to be a very... It's not just a crucial time for Microsoft, but I think it's a very crucial time in gaming as a whole. And this is part of a, a massive discussion. I mean, we could we could discuss how gaming is going in for six years straight. We literally could because there's so many different factors that you that you can take into account at this point. It's not just the hardware is moving on. It's that we as gamers are getting less patient for stuff. We want things moving faster, patches to come out quicker. We want content to be easier to digest and available whenever we want it we we don't necessarily want our stuff across one different device and it's going to be interesting to see how things such as exclusives work in this scenario because for example we all know about the whole halo fiasco with halo 5 is it coming to the pc is it not coming to the pc and obviously between aaron greenberg's and frank o'connor's comments from 343 you could be forgiven to be really just absolutely confused. However, um, Frank O'Connor has now gone on record and said that Aaron's comments were actually misconstrued by people. It was a non-committal answer. And it's not out of the question, but there's no plans at the moment. To be honest, I think that's that's not exactly how... I think if, if that's what he meant, which is possible... I think he very poorly worded his statements. But how this is going to affect people in the future, it's going to be very interesting. Now, obviously, even the, the Xbox app itself with streaming capabilities, because streaming is becoming a really big deal as well. And we're not just referring to things such as, oh, let's say streaming from the, uh, you know, the... the the uh, PlayStation networks, that type of thing. We're talking about streaming from your local device to another system in your in your home, which is really handy for those who are running, let's say, their Xbox Ones in the living room, and then they can stream to, let's say, a tablet in their home, which is quite handy. Let's say you've got an Xbox One in your uh, living room, you are laying in bed and you want to stream to, let's say, your Windows tablet or your tablet in general. All of these things are going to be coming towards us not too long from now and the future is going to be very 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 interesting i don't know necessarily if we're going to love everything that microsoft's doing because it's just too difficult to say aurelian himself has said that there's a lot of stuff that he just cannot talk about yet that they're planning but it's kind of exciting isn't it so let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one i'm curious anyway take care and have a great day Bye for now.